In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Our hearts are made for only to be satisfied in God and only to find true peace, satisfaction, in rest and rest in Christ. That's where our hearts find their true joy and their true life. In today's gospel, we witness a young man who has done much in his life. He has done all of the commandments, who comes to ask Jesus, what is it that I need to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus gives him the commandments which you just heard, including the one where he says, love your neighbor as, as yourself. Or, you know, love your neighbors. The young man retorts that he has absolutely, he has done these. And we're to take this as not in a sign of arrogance or pride in this particular case, although in other cases, in other gospels it is. In this case, we can take it as the man being genuinely honest, that he has attempted to fulfill these commandments to the best of his ability. But he goes on and he says, the man says, what do I lack? Do you know why he asks, what do I lack? because he carries around within himself the sense that he lacks something, that something is missing. Because, and this is the case as it is with most of us, uh, I don't know if you've ever completed a degree or ever accomplished a major goal in your life. We feel joy for a minute. And then the next moment we're like, is that it? Is that all there is? At least that seems to be a common experience. It's because the commandments, the fulfilling, the mere fulfilling of the commandments is not enough. It isn't satisfying. Now it can be satisfying if you use it in an arrogant way and think you're better than other people. But it's a false satiety because it only feels good because you've raised yourself above others. But assuming this man is a good and humble man who has followed the commandments and done everything he can do, he still has a deep sense that there's something missing. And actually, most of us Christians, if I believe, if we're honest, might carry around the same sense as this it. I go to church, I pray. I keep my prayer rule, I give to the church, I serve others. Is that it? And the truth is, that's not it. Because the only way our heart can be satisfied is with a profound and intimate relationship with God, which is accomplished through Christ. And it is only in intimacy with Him that we come to any sort of beginning of satisfaction. You see, there's another truth contained in this gospel today. We're not meant to be satisfied here. Do you know every time you find yourself satisfied in this life, more than likely it leads you into idolatry. It's the truth. If steak is satisfying, then I will worship it. And it is very good. <laughs> steak is. If work is overly satisfying, I will work. Think of all the things that people commit themselves to, the ideologies, the food, the pleasure. All of these things have a momentary satisfaction, fleeting, but then oftentimes leave one empty and wondering, is that it? That's because ultimately we're not just made for the kingdom of heaven, but we're made for the other world. That we're satisfied when we lay hold of something that's not within the created realm, but is outside of creation, that is God himself. Our hearts long for our heavenly homeland. And we have to recover this mind in modern day America 
that we are but sojourners here. That we are aliens walking in a foreign land. And that our ultimate home, our ultimate becoming, fulfillment and satisfaction is in the eternal life of which we lay hold of not until we die, until we are present fully with Christ. You see, even if we get satisfied with this earthly faith, this what some would call a religion, even that in and of itself is not meant to be fully satisfying here. Jesus tells this man who lacks something, he says, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. We know that this man is sorrowful. And we also know that Jesus sees his heart and what his heart needs. Is Jesus being cruel? Does Jesus look at all of us and he says, you know, I, look, I know that you love this one thing and that your soul is wrapped around it and I want you to give that up. Is he being cruel? No, he sees that the man doesn't own his wealth, but that the man's wealth owns him. You see, when we become satisfied with earthly goods, whether it be wealth or pleasure or the things I mentioned earlier, instead of owning them, bigger cars, bigger houses, instead of owning them, they come to own us. And they come to preoccupy us. And they come to enslave us so that we work for them alone. And that is the key to understanding why this man has to give up his wealth. Now, mind you, other rich men do go to the kingdom of heaven. Zacchaeus, for instance. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea. There are other men who are women in, in the history of the church who are wealthy. The key for this particular man, though, is that his heart has been bound to his wealth. And the only healing, the only way to make him and turn him into a sojourner who is seeking real eternal life is for him to disassociate himself with his wealth, to give it away, to put treasures in heaven. In our times, we live in one of the most pleasure pleasureful times. It's easy to find pleasure. We live in a time where every ideology is at the fingertips. I mentioned pleasure at our fingertips. We have abundance of resources. It is so easy for us to become satisfied in a temporal way and to lose touch with this idea that we are sojourners, aliens, and wanderers in this day, day and age. That as Christians, we are not looking for mere fulfilling of commandments or for merely taking joy in our life as we have it. Our life is found in God, our life is found in Christ, and our life is found in making the kingdom of heaven first and only and where all of our energy goes. If we put our energy and our activity in earthly levels, we are promised that eventually, of course, we know that we will die. But we are also promised that, that in that context, we will walk around innately dissatisfied, empty, and even though we may delusionally feel full, we may be actually empty with inside. So let's take our Lord's teaching to this man and not walk away sorrowfully to our great high calling, but rather in all things ask God, what is it that I lack? How can I lay a hold of your king kingdom? How can I make this life my journey to that kingdom so that I can lay hold of joy, true ultimate satisfaction, true health, true sanctification, and true love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Yes.